Welcome to a new video on my channel. Hope you're doing fine. Today I want to give you an update about the latest Q2 earnings of Pagaya Technologies. Over here we start with the financial highlights as the company highlights the network volume of 1.9 billion US dollars, which leads to a total revenue of 181.5 million US dollars and then just EBITDA of around 5 million US dollars. The company names operating highlights for example five new programs with ex existing partners which is contributing to around seven percent of the volume in the first half of 2022 it is definitely a good sign that the existing companies um, are expanding their partnerships which is uh, a sign that the company are happy with the performance of the partnership so definitely a good sign for the future they also onboarded a large u.s bank which has over 100 billion in assets as a major partner in auto so this will definitely lead to a lot of uh, revenue in the future they also highlighted that they have a new president which has more than 30 uh, 30 years of financial services expertise which is definitely a good sign and as you can see over here he has been at barclays uk and also Citigroup asia so a lot of background in the financial service they also gave an update about the delinquency rates, which um, have been developed favorably, as you can see over here, in comparison to the unsecured consumer benchmark, which only slightly decreased for the um, delinquency rate from Q4 2021 to Q1 2022, whereas Begaya has been decreasing quite significant. As you can see over here, from the last, well, from Q4 2021 to the first quarter of 2022 so this is a good sign it will be interesting to see if this will uh, play out further or if there's been or is going to be a change in the future the company also gives an update about the development as you can see over here in the bar chart the network volume has been increasing pretty drastically until the uh, third quarter of 2021 afterwards it has been increasing only slightly and uh, this quarter the second quarter of 2021 2022 in the first um, quarter in a while with quite significant growth you can also see unfortunately that the conversion rate has been decreasing beginning in the third quarter of 2022 so this is something to keep an eye on in the future the total network volume for 2021 was 4.9 billion and if you now compare this to the initial investor presentation you can see over here they expected 4.4 billion of network volume by the end of 2021 which they happily um, beat so this is definitely a good sign so not really sh thinking that their estimates are too much out of line and if I now jump back over again, they also highlight that there is a lot of um, growth for the company, for grabs, because the uh, top 25 largest US bank have an annual volume of 650 billion. So this is a, huge, a lot more than the 5 billion of network volume which the guy has right now. So now let's have a look again, a little bit more in detail in the, the business development as you can see over here network volume which has been increasing 180 percent year over year and as i mentioned before these three um, quarters their growth has been only 100 million and from q2 to q1 there's been around 12 percent growth whereas the total revenue has been only increasing quarter over quarter to around six percent and in total the growth has been lower than the network volume as you can see over here it's only um, quotation marks around 120 percent growth what is the financial overview for the first half of the year 2022 as you can see over here around 3.6 billion of network volume and now let's jump over again to what they forecasted in the initial investor presentation they forecasted around 7.7 .7 billion of us dollars in network volume this is less than 
half of what they expected. Something to keep an eye on um, for later on, because I will be coming back to this number. The revenue from fees of around uh, 322 million, which is a uh, around 9% take rate. They also had 30%, 30 million of interest and interest investment income, which then leads to 352 total revenue. On the cost side, they had a production cost of around 200 million and operating expenses of 130 million. Um, the exclusion is the share based compensation, which unfortunately has been quite a lot, but I will be coming back to this later on. And this in total then leads to an adjusted net income of 8 million US dollars for the first half of 2022. Let's have a detailed look at the comparison of Q1 and Q2 2022. As you can see over here, total revenue has been increasing by 6%, whereas the network volume has been increasing by 18%, so a little bit higher due to rounding errors. Then in the initial, uh, in the, the slide I showed you before, and as you can see over here, the net loss has been increased dramatically, and this is due to 146 million of share-based compensation for the second quarter of 2022. As you can see over here, adjusted net income was around the same as the quarter before. Let's have a little bit a deeper look at the share-based compensation. As you can see over here, for the six month or the first half of 2022, there has been around 163 million of share-based compensation and most of it has been in the second quarter. So it has been only 16.7 million of share-based compensation in the first quarter and uh, something to keep an eye on because this is almost 80% of the revenue for the quarter. So uh, yeah, even though they don't count it as expense, it's in a way an expense because it's directing existing shareholders and therefore uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. And this is definitely a hefty number. So. I would be curious to see how this number pans out in the future and if it's going back to let's say 20 million or something like this when it's a reasonable number then this is okay for me however with these huge numbers um, this is not sustainable for for the long term so we'll be uh, having a look for this in the future so it's um, a positive side for the balance sheet because then you don't need a lot of um, cash or maybe don't have to raise a lot of money. Um, however, it's, it's still delusion in some form. So, um, and as you can see over here, the adjusted net income is uh, positive right now. So with their cash at hand, which is uh, around 415 million US dollars at the end of uh, the first half, there's still a lot of uh, room for them for the future and definitely nothing which uh, is, a, is a bad sign right now for the company and lastly the company also gave an outlook for 2022 and they estimate the network volume to be between 7.2 billion to 7.8 billion and the total revenue to range between 700 million and 725 million which then would lead to an adjusted EBITDA from positive 10 to negative 20 million US dollars. And now let's again compare this to the numbers they initially projected in September 2021. You can see over here, 7.7 .7 is on the high side of the guidance, which I think is pretty positive. And right now I would really estimate that they uh, get on the middle, middle range. Let's see over here, 3.6 billion has been the uh, revenue or the network volume they have up to now. And then this would probably be around uh, 3. Uh, 7 3, maybe 7.4, but I highly doubt that they will uh, get so many new um, network volume in. Therefore, I would be, wouldn't be surprised to be it on the on lower end of the range. Um, as you can see over here, the, re the revenue was projected with 679 million, which is lower than what they now in their 2022 outlook so this is definitely a good sign even though the network volume 
should decrease, the total revenue is increasing. So this is a good sign. And um, I'm not sure if they, yeah, no guidance for adjusted EBITDA. I don't really think it's it's that meaningful right now, especially if you keep in mind that the stock-based compensation has been really, really high. So as I mentioned before, 80% of the initial um, revenue. So that should be it. Hope you enjoyed the video and um, I will be having a look out for the future for the company because I think the business model is pretty interesting and if they can deliver on the uh, promise that their AI is better than the um, existing banks, then this might be a good investment. However, keep in mind this is not investment advice, this is just my personal opinion. And uh, yeah, you have to do your due diligence before investing in a company. What do you think about the company? It would be interesting to hear in the, in the comments. And until next time, have a good day. Bye-bye.